buckle up. Thank you for listening to Sarabian and Lawhorns Musicians and Beyond, where we bring you the backstage info on the life, lyrics, and long journeys of the music industry. Today's episode is brought to you in honor of the Bork Family Foundation. Ray Bork, the Hall of Fame inductee, also known as the Big 7-7, supports a variety of different charitable and educational endeavors. For more info and donation information, go to BorkFamilyFoundation.org. Today I have a co-host guest, Jordan Nobrega. Mark is unable to be in here today, so welcome, Jordan. Glad to be here. Thanks for coming in. We have a great show coming up. We have Rachel Sumner. Yep. And it's amazing things that this girl has done. And she has some big announcements of things that are right around the corner. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Rachel. Rachel, how you doing? Hello, I am fantastic. How are you? We are great. And thank you for coming in to sit with us at Musicians and Beyond with Jordan and I. You have a lot going on lately. Let's Let's hear a little bit about you. How did you get into music and what was your inspiration? Certainly. My mom has been a huge music fan since the very beginning. I mean, she told me she used to put like headphones up to her baby bump while I was in there. Uh, So music has been ingrained in my family for a long time. Nobody performed until I came along. Uh, But, you know, my mom always had Jackson Brown on and the Eagles and uh, my dad always had Queen on. And and it was just I I grew up singing along to musicals in the car Uh, somewhere along the way. I picked up the flute in elementary school, uh, even though I wanted to play the trumpet, but uh, my mom said that that was too loud. So (laughs) I went to the flute and uh, I studied the flute through high school and that's what I went to college for originally. So I went to um, Utah State University to study performance and then I really wanted to come out to Boston because it just was a vibrant scene and and Berkeley College of Music was here and they had a film scoring program which I was especially keen on participating in. So I came to Berkeley after one year in Utah and I studied composition and film scoring. I didn't play guitar at all until about halfway through when I discovered the American Roots program at Berkeley, which uh, has fostered a ton of really incredible and influential musicians. Uh, I was really good friends with Molly Tuttle, who is now making a big splash uh, in Nashville and all over, really. She's an incredible guitarist, and I basically learned how to play guitar from her and my other friends, and they taught me chords. They showed me Hazel and Alice um, and a lot of other older roots musicians like Bill Monroe, and I was just completely enchanted by that, and that's how I came to acoustic music. Wow, you've really done a good job. You've uh, you, you made it far, and you get a lot of good news to share with us, and... Yeah. You mentioned that you play the guitar and the flute. Do you play anything else? Uh, I picked up banjo, so I do claw hammer, old-time style banjo. Um, And I play clarinet a little bit, uh, enough to to record with it. Um, I've done some recording and arranging for for woodwinds. Um, And, uh, you know... I, I'm trying to whistle, but I'm not very good at that. <laughs> keep, keep, keep trying. <laughs> and obviously you're a singer and a songwriter. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I saw, I looked at your Instagram beforehand. Um, I saw your cover art was released today. It's beautiful. <gasps> oh, thank you so much. Yeah. So could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. So the cover art is for my debut solo album called Rachel Sumner and Traveling Light. And the cover art was done by Betsy Heron. She lives up in New Hampshire and is a, a great acoustic musician herself. But she designed this art and there are symbols within it that represent all of the songs on the record it's a nine track album that will be coming out uh, in august august 5th awesome Excellent. we're looking forward to seeing that come yeah, out definitely if someone wants to buy some of your music mm-hmm. how would they go about doing that rachelsumnermusic.com 
You can find links to pretty much everything there, or you can come to a show. The shows are listed on my website as well. I'm going to be selling the record early at all of my shows coming up. Um, I have the CDs, so that'll be a, a extra incentive for you to come out and see the band live because you can walk away with a, an album before anybody else gets it. Wonderful. Save save a couple for me and Jordan because we Definitely. listened to your songs on the way in here and we were nothing but impressed. Aww. It was very good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And okay. when is that release date for everyone? August 5th. Awesome. And I will have vinyl. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's I, really that's cool. exciting. Yeah, yeah. That's coming back. Vinyl's cool. People have seemed very interested in having it, so I'm, I'm excited that this time around we've got it. Definitely. Great. What else do you do besides music? Do you have any other hobbies? I love to swim. I like to do sound. I mean, this is related to music, but my day job, quote unquote, is doing live sound for Club Passim. So I performance manage. So when acts come in, I do pretty much everything, set up the stage, get the sound going and pay them out. And I also run the school of music for Club Passim. So not so much a hobby, but a job, but I do really love what I do. So it's nice when you can do something that you love and get paid at it also. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a win-win for you. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And I've also noticed that you've been traveling and doing shows. I saw that you have a few dates coming up. Where will you be in upcoming shows? Yeah, uh, the big one is Club Passim, June 4th. Um, I'm going to be playing with my band Traveling Light. It's a string band. Uh, and it's, in fact, it's going to be an expanded version. We're going to have pedal steel and fiddle and upright bass. And there will be some banjo. We're going to play through the, the upcoming record all the way through uh, and have a little party with it. So that I'm very excited. And we're going all the way down to Nashville, New York, Asheville. We're getting all the Vils. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. So it's really exciting that we're getting out there. That's really cool. Yeah, you're doing the whole circuit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Nashville's beautiful. Oh my gosh. I, I love, love Nashville. <laughs> You've been in music mm -hmm. and a lot of things happen in music, good and bad. What has been the most exciting thing that has happened to you? I think it's winning the Lennon Award for my song Radium Girls. I mean, I never expected to get this far in a songwriting competition. Um, I've entered this one particular, the John Lennon songwriting competition, a couple times, and I kind of forgot about it. It's it's one of those things where you just enter a whole bunch of contests and, you know, let the, the chips fall however they may. And uh, this time it was just really exciting to find out that I, I had won the grand prize and that I went on to the Lennon Award part and that I won the Lennon Award. Wow, that, yeah. that's amazing. And this award has been going on since 1997. Uh, Yoko Ono, uh, Yoko Ono and Lennon, started this in honor of her late husband, John Lennon. And the judges in it are huge names. I mean, we have Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm -hmm. You have Sheila E., who was in Prince, uh, another legend. Jimmy Cliff, Lita Ford, a founding member from the Grateful Dead, Bob Weir. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's some crazy names that you're... Oh my gosh. They're involved with it. That's really humbling. Yeah, just knowing that they're going to listen to my song is mind-blowing, honestly. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And what do you get out of this besides publicity and all this? Is there uh, any kind of prize? Yes. So for the grand prize that I've already won, I got a bunch of recording equipment, microphone, headphones, new interface, two guitars, a keyboard. It's just amazing stuff, um, mixing speakers. And if I win Song of the Year, then I get $20,000, which is life-changing. Wow. Wow. 20,000. So 10,000 for you and 10,000 for us for putting you over the edge because of all of these listeners on Musicians in the Air. This is great. This is the quickest money we've ever right? made, Jordan. Yeah, no. I love it. Let's we should do this more often. We should. Yes. Thank you. No, congratulations on that. I have a good feeling about it and Thank uh, you. Not if, but when when you win the 
twenty thousand dollars. Everybody listening, cross your fingers and your toes. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, is it up to the listeners to help vote for this, or is it out of the hands of the listeners? Right now, it's out of the hands of the listeners. The Lennon Award was a, a public voting situation where everybody voted in the month of April, and I was so amazed to see the community rally around my song. There were people who told me, my mom set timer on her phone every day, so like, remember to cast a vote for you and throughout the entire month. So I just was really touched by that. That's cool. So again, we're here with Rachel Sumner. She is a folk singer, songwriter, uh, flutist, <laughs> very talented all around. So your big song was Radium Girls, and I think um, that it's probably a good time. We'll play that right now. In the days when Rosie Beck and girls to join assembly lines, a mixture of simply named and dark made wristwatch faces shine. And women with star-spangled hearts sat faithfully in rows Bent to help the boys in trench stave off those dark shadows Day by day they all were tasked to paint two hundred dials With brushes made of camel hair and radium Dust and vibes. The numbers on the clocks were painted dainty, slim and slight. So the girls were taught to use their lips to point the bristles tight. The taste was a little foul, but no one really seemed to mind. The pay was more than three times what a girl back then could find. Radium was champion, the newfound fountain. For a time each painter prospered Though the work they did was tough And were delighted when they clock out Covered in the magic stuff They decorate their drab as dress as paint skin So they'd sparkle No earthly sight quite like a glowing angel in the darkness Secretly received results that told a different story 
so stone hearts fortified by corporate greed Even when the women's own hearts one by one it ceased to beat Okay, so Rachel, that was Radium Girls. And could you tell us a little bit about the lyrics to it and your songwriting process, how you came up with it? Did you come up with the music first and then put the words to it? I think people listening just don't know how something like this is put together and there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. So this was kind of peculiar for me in the way that the lyrics came first. Um, And the idea of it... uh, I had a very clear idea of what I wanted this song to be. Um, I've been a long fan of English ballads, old English ballads and Appalachian ballads. And oftentimes there are these very gruesome murder ballads that happen. You find in these old folk songs and really what those were, that's not just like gruesomeness for the sake of being gross, but it, it served as a warning for people. It was a true story that would get bottled up into a song and passed down through the generations. And now we're so far removed from those original stories that it's kind of hard to to say exactly what murder ballad is about what murder but um i've always been interested in the functionality of ballads and so i wanted to try my hand at writing a ballad and so I've, I've had this idea for a long time and I just didn't know what to write it about and it wasn't until I learned about the Radium Girls in 2019 that I knew I wanted to write a ballad about them. I was listening to a song by my favorite all-time songwriter Joanna Newsom, and uh, at the very end of this song time as a symptom she has this kind of stream of consciousness joycean section where she's saying words that seemingly don't have any connection with each other and one of those words was undarked and so i was digging pretty deep within the song and i didn't know what undarked was so i looked it up and it turned out to be the name of this mixture that people used in the early 1900s to paint watch face styles so that they would glow in the dark. Originally, it was done for the men in the trenches in World War I uh, so that they didn't have to strike a match and give away their position, but they could stay synchronized with the rest of the army. And it turned into a really big fad. Uh, People were obsessed with this glow-in-the-dark paint, but it had radium in it. And nobody really knew, the public wasn't aware of how dangerous radium was because it was pretty new at the time. And so factories were making so much money. They were paying these women. They wanted women who had small hands who could uh, not waste any paint by with on the small watch faces. And they were making tons of money uh, doing this. And they didn't give the women any protective gear at all. Uh, in fact, they told women to lip dip paint. So they were putting the paintbrush in their mouth 
um, horrifying, horrifying story. And then when confronted, they, they denied it. They said that, you know, they weren't in the wrong, although their scientists up in the lab, the people making it, they had lead lined everything, you know, they, they were protecting them. And they, in fact, were saying that, that the women were lying and that they had syphilis and lots of really awful things. So I was horrified that I didn't know about this story. I wasn't taught it in school. I hadn't heard it come up in any World War One or World War Two movies. Just total absence of the story. And that made me mad. Uh, and that's when I knew that this was the story that I was going to turn into a ballad. So I went about writing it. Um, I started with the last line first. Uh, you may say women have been long since elevated in this world, but how can that be? Our ashes still speak louder than our words. That line, our ashes still speak louder than our words, came first. Because I could see how this story of the radium girls kind of mirrors some stories that happen currently. Um, how, you know, women aren't believed until it's too late. And the ashes word, especially uh, in the song, is important because the way that they were able to prove that these women were poisoned by radium was they had to exhume a woman who had died earlier from suspected radium poisoning and disintegrate her bones so that they could actually find the radium uh, and, and detect the radium in it. So that's how they proved it. They they literally had to prove it with her ashes instead of her words. Yeah, so. That's amazing. I didn't know that story. I'll tell you that. I did, but I didn't learn from school, just like you said, and it, it should be something that we know more about in school. The song's beautiful. I did hear it, and the lyrics are so, I mean, it's such a good story to tell, and the way you told it was amazing, but it's so tragic, and it's so upsetting to hear about, but I know you have had uh, many other songs come out as well, such as Hunting Doves, um, which is another beautiful song, and where do you see yourself in 10 years? Ooh, uh, hopefully, ask wanna, the deep ones. <laughs> I want to be doing what I'm doing, but yeah. I just want to do it, hopefully, to more ears. I want more people to hear what I'm doing. Um, I want to be recording. I want to even be producing. I, I like to produce my own music, and I would love to produce for other people. There aren't many female producers in the in the industry, so that is very intriguing to me, it's something that I, I want to follow and do more of. Um, but Anais Mitchell is one of my other favorite songwriters, mm -hmm. and she, um, she has it all. I love her career because she is a folk singer, and then she wrote a Broadway musical that won eight Tony Awards, you know, so, and then she did a project that was all about old English folk ballads. So she just like does whatever she wants. She follows her muse and that's what I want to be doing in 10 years. So you want to do it for the love of it. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Not the money. Correct. Love that. Okay. So what's interesting is all the guests that we've had on here, if we was, we've asked them the question directly or just chatting, mm -hmm. All of them say the same exact thing. They're not in it. They're not expecting to make a million dollars at it. It's it's one in a million, mm -hmm. but someone is going to. But they do it for the love of the music and getting on stage and seeing people say the same words you are. They know your songs. Uh, have people come up to them, up to them and say, you know, I listened to your song and it really resonated with me because of an incident that happened. And it's really cool to have that power that you have and have people like suck that in and, you know, you're making a difference to them. And it, it's really so weird that every musician here so far has come back to the same thing. They said, you know, in the beginning, they want to be a rock star. And as they grew as human beings and figuring things out, knowing what they love, staying with their passion, that that's why they do it. So that's pretty cool. You're young yourself, and you already have that vision for yourself. So that's, yeah. that's great. I just want to be what some other musicians have been to me throughout my life. You know, they got me through some pretty tough moments in my childhood, and, I mean, throughout my entire life. Every horrible moment was made better by a song of some sort, and I want to write the songs that for when I want to hear out in the world, but I, I want to write songs that will resonate with other people and hopefully help them through those tough times 
And I think we need that now more than ever. The times are very tough. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you have the knack for it for sure. Like Jordan said, we listened to it on the way in here, a couple of uh, yes. tracks, and you know we were really taken back on it. We uh, were really touched. It's pretty impressive. Thank you. Absolutely. And Hunting Doves came out in January. I'd love to hear a little bit more on the backstory about that song. Sure. It's a song that I started writing like seven years ago and just never finished. The melody came first. Uh, that's how I probably would describe the majority of my songs. Mm -hmm. um, the melody will come first or a, a line will come. And I sometimes spend a lot of time sitting with it and just thinking about it and waiting for the right idea to come up that matches that the tone of the, the music. So... Um, during the pandemic, I started writing this other piece uh, of music, and I realized that these two melodies, one that was written seven years ago and one that was written in 2020, were part of the same song. And yeah. so I, I put them together, and then the words started coming out. There are, like, I, I think I have, like, seven different versions of this song with different lyrics. Um, but I was able to kind of find guiding lyrics um, from Finnegan's Wake uh, by James Joyce at the very end of it. There are some kind of nonsensical words. Actually, it's also mentioned in, in the, the Time as a Symptom Joanna Newsom song that I got the idea for, for Radium Girls, where James Joyce says, uh, a way, a way, a lone, a last, a loved, a long. Uh, and so I took those and I realized each one is a verse and I used those as guiding posts and I wrote around and this, this story of, of heartbreak kind of emerged from it. And more importantly, it's a story about moving on, like finding that moment when you realize you have to move forward, uh, without somebody. And so that, that was kind of the, the background of, of that song. And I'm, I was really happy when I was finally able to finish it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and I was just, me being a musician as well, I'd like you to let me know, like, what would you say for an aspiring musician is, you know, the right steps to take? Um, what should they be doing? Uh, yeah, for an aspiring musician, um, like a writer, yeah, uh, just keep writing. Write what you yeah. know. Write the stories around you. Um and don't stop, like, just keep that pen moving. You can always edit. I think editing is the songwriter's greatest tool. And you can sculpt it and, you know, take your time. It doesn't need to be a 100% finished product right away, you know. Definitely. I'm the type of person that just scraps everything. Mm. If I have one thing I don't like, I just toss it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Completely. <Save> everything. <laughs> Like keep keep a an ongoing notes app, like app thing, yeah. a little file where you just put all of the the verses that you you nixed, just put them all in there, dump it in there, and then go back from time to time and revisit those because I bet you there are some good ideas worth saving in there. Should have saved them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jordan's quite a singer, so we had a couple of callbacks on the voice oh my gosh yeah, yeah. yeah. wow she, that's amazing it's been a fun road <laughs> that's incredible yeah. uh, she's in a couple of movies really yeah uh, in one yeah. fairly big one that's coming out that i don't can you and i can't uh, yet can't. unfortunately <gasps> oh. i know i wish Double secret squirrel <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I, I hope that I'll excited. get to know what it is soon. It definitely, yeah. Yeah, you will. We'll keep you in. in we will keep you in the loop. Yeah. So part, of, part of Musicians and Beyond is is networking. Mm -hmm. You know, like we mentioned before, Francois Samard, a uh, great musician, does a lot of booking. Reach out to him. All of these um, different people that are on have something else to offer. Mm -hmm. um, some might be in your realm and some might not, but we have... Um, all genres on Musicians and Beyond. We talk with uh, tour managers. We talk with uh, producers. We talk with songwriters, um, singers, some that do all of them, some that are hoping to do something. So, it, you know, we have some people coming on that have sold literally about, I think it, last I looked was 11 million albums. Wow. Um, Crazy. So, yeah, we have yeah. good names coming up. Do. Um, you know, with music, like any job, I would assume there's a lot of things that 
go your way, a lot that don't, mm -hmm. and a lot of things that you like. This is great. In other ones, uh, I want to hang up the guitar. Yeah. What are, are the, a lot of the uh, positives and negatives about being a musician? Yeah. Well, I think the number one positive thing for me is connecting with people, whether that's other musicians, people in my band. Um, people who host us uh, as we tour down, you know, that we've got, we've been really lucky to have really nice fans and friends put us up to connecting to people who come to shows. My, one of my favorite parts of a show is the meet and greet afterward. I love talking to people and um, hearing what they have to say, finding out where they're from. So that, that's definitely one of the, the highlights. I, I love to, to meet new folks. Uh, one of the, the sort of cons of it, the music industry um, as an industry is uh, I'm always on my email <laughs> 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 and social media and uh, like way more than I want, want to be. Yeah. Um, I would rather focus on the, the music part, the writing, the practicing, the the listening you know but there is a lot of administrative work to it especially if you're an independent artist who doesn't have label support or booking agent um currently right now i, d I don't have a manager or booking agent or label um so I'm, I'm doing everything on my own which i've kind of figured out systems to to make it happen but it it is exhausting it definitely is and i can relate with the whole social media thing and also where can we find you on social media yeah uh at r t s u m n e r at r t sumner um is my handle on twitter and instagram uh facebook you can find rachel sumner music um YouTube, I post a lot of videos uh, generally. There is another Rachel Sumner artist. She's a children's oh. singer. Uh, and so that is not me. Uh, <laughs> she she seems really cool, though. She makes, like, uh, instruments out of kitchenware. Oh, like, that's really cool. Yeah. Turkey baster <laughs> whistle. It, it's really fun. I've, I've gone down a Rachel that's Sumner's a children's artist uh, wormhole. It's like the guys you see when you come out of the Boston Garden that, Playing the uh, old pickle jars and the, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean some of them. The talents are incredible. She <laughs> seems incredible, and I I have now started getting uh, people from Nashville because she lives in Nashville. People from Nashville now email me and they're like, "Do you still do children's music? We we would love to have you back. Like you were so great." So I'm I'm really happy she's you know living her best life. That's Definitely, awesome. yeah. Maybe you should hook up with her. <laughs> I'm sure she gets emails on your behalf. Yes, definitely. Well. We really ought to, to team up like that. Yeah. yeah. It might be fate. <laughs> Absolutely. That's cool. If, um, if you were to meet anyone, I like asking this question because mm -hmm. it's uh, multi-layered. If you were to meet any famous musician, dead or alive, mm -hmm. and co-write, play, get on stage with, who, who do you think it would be? I think I'd have to go with Joanna Newsom. She she's she's my my queen, my songwriting queen. Uh, she's incredible. I would be very intimidated to meet her, but her her lyric writing is just out of this world. She's on another level, and the music that she makes is is wild. And yeah, she plays the harp, and so I think it would just be really fun to to collaborate with her. Uh, yeah, that's that's the ultimate dream. Well, you never know what, what could happen when, you know, with social media mm -hmm. and yeah. people posting this. You may come across someone that knows her or is related or whatever and, you know, the tagging and all that. So you never know. Hopefully, <laughs> if you're listening, Rachel Sumner, she's ready. To that's the other you. dream. She does, she's not on social media <laughs> at all, yeah. which is like, I'm like, yes, you go. <laughs> <laughs> and she's Absolutely. able to maintain uh you know, a, a very devout following. <laughs> um, yeah, so that that also is the dream. But if you know Joanna Newsom, anybody, hit please, her up. Please let me know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're not just any run-of-the-mill musician. <laughs> you, I mean, you've really made a name for yourself. Oh, thank even you. before this, uh, the Lennon Award. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, you've done well. So, also... I, we spoke a little bit before, and I know you grew up in California. Mm -hmm. um, when did you leave California? I left about a decade ago. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, I've been in Massachusetts for the last 10 years. So were you? did you do school there and everything? Like, were you doing music there? 
Yeah, I was in like community orchestras. Oh, um, awesome. I, I was more doing that. I was the assistant drum major of my marching band. Um, so I was very into marching band and, and all that uh, good stuff. But um, I didn't really start playing out until I came to Massachusetts. And that's when I started actually like in earnest playing shows and, and folk music on stages by yeah. myself. I was very nervous in California. I had like stage fright to the max. Um, but yeah, somehow Massachusetts got that out of me. I was going to say, is there anything that changed that? Like if you had stage fright before, is there anything that you worked on to help you with that? Just, I just kept getting up there. Yeah. Even though my body was like, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I fought the urge and, and I just kept doing it until it became familiar and I knew that, okay, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> you know, uh, it, when, once you get past that, it, it becomes easier. Yeah. Well, again, you are listening to Musicians and Beyond with Sarabian and Lawhorn, minus Lawhorn. <laughs> we are going to dub in No Brega. Uh, Jordan, thank you for coming in last minute. Thank um, you. Again, how do we... Uh, get in touch with you, find your all your information, download your music. How, can we just tell everyone one more time? RachelSumnerMusic.com is where you can find everything. All of my social media links and how to download. We have a pre-order on for the new uh, record that's coming out. There's a limited edition vinyl. Um, so if you're interested in that or if you want to just make sure that I reserve your copy of a CD or a digital copy, you can find all of that information on my website, rachelsumnermusic.com. Awesome. Rachel okay. Sumner, thank you for taking time out of your day. You literally came here right from another gig. <laughs> yeah. And we appreciate you flying in here and, and doing this with us. <laughs> thank yeah, you for thank having Thank you so me. much. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And um, with that, I just want to say thank you for being our friend. Thank you for being my friend. <laughs>